Hi friends! Today we're going to talk about some arcs that I've read recently. So I read a couple of these last month and I've read some this month and I don't remember what all I reviewed last month and it's a hot mess. So we're just going to go over everything and pretend like it's the first time you ever heard me talk about it. Okay. So the first book that we're going to talk about is Kisses and Croissants by Anna-Sophie Johano and I give this a 3.5 out of 5 stars. This book follows our main character who wants to be a ballerina. She believes that her great something grandmother was a ballerina that had been painted by Degas but her family doesn't really have any proof of that but she believes that that's what means she's supposed to be a ballerina and she gets into this summer program in Paris and so she goes to Paris to learn about ballet and there she runs into her arch nemesis for ballet back home and also into a cute boy who shows her around Paris and also kind of helps her figure out the old family legend. I liked the Paris aspect of this. I enjoyed like the sightseeing and like the French life and all those things as I have continuously been obsessed with the Chateau Diaries. I am obsessed with France now so like that part was super enjoyable. I didn't necessarily love um, like the relationship was kind of weird to me. The ending was okay but there was like this big third act plot twist that I have seen a bajillion and a half times. Every time there's like a ballerina this thing happens and it's like this big third act plot twist for the darkest moment of the darkest dark and I just hate it and like I've seen it coming from a mile away and it just it really ruined the book for me. It really like the book lost a whole point for this third act plot twist and I did not enjoy it and it really sullied the book for me. Uh, overall it was a decent read. I think that it you know would fit well for its intended audience um, which is a YA audience and I liked the France parts of it. I also read last month Isn't It Romantic by Alyssa K. Adams. I gave this a 3.75 out of 5 stars. This book series follows a group of prestigious men. Um, some are like politicians, some pro athletes, some big businessmen, uh, musicians, and these guys are either struggling in their relationships or struggle to be in a relationship and they read romance novels together to help them kind of figure out how to navigate the romances in their life. This particular book was following the Russian who we have known and loved from the very first book and the Russian is married to Elena who is his childhood friend and it is a marriage of convenience. She needed to get out of Russia so she married Vlad in order to come to the United States with him and we kind of learn more about their past and like it's very much like you know from the beginning that they both kind of have feelings for each other but are afraid to admit it because of what it might mean for their relationship and there's a lot of other like external things going on. For me the weird side plot which there's always a weird side plot in these but this one was particularly weird uh, especially like what happened at the end did not work for me. I still really enjoyed the book overall. I think this was a much more like gentle, it's not like a super steamy book like the other ones in the series. It is more of like a very naturing gentle type of book. So I, I know a lot of people DNF this one who have loved the previous books or didn't like it as much as the previous books. I definitely get that. Like I can see why that is. Um, I still really enjoyed it and I will definitely keep reading books in the series. The other book that I read last month was Casadora by Romina Garber and I gave that a 4 out of 5 stars. This is the second book in the Lobizona. I thought it was a duology but I was way wrong because the way that ended definitely not a duology. Uh, but the first book starts with with our main character who uh, believes that she is an illegal immigrant and because of that she and her mother live with this older lady who is like a surrogate grandmother to her and she believes that her mother has like been working for this rich family trying to get them papers for the United States but she basically like stays inside all the time she's not allowed outside there's some weird thing going on with her eyeballs um, there's just like some weird things going on about her existence and she learns that she's actually a werewolf and she her mother is taken by ice and she 
is like trying to save her mother while also trying to save herself and figure out about her life and who she is and all of these things that are happening to her. And book two picks up where we left off at the end of book one and the end of it just like threw me for a loop. I was not expecting to go where we went but also I thought this was just a duology so it definitely made sense that it went in a complete different direction than what I was expecting because it's not a duology there's going to be more. So definitely enjoyed it. Definitely will pick up the third book. I hate the covers. We're not going to talk about that. Okay. This month I read People We Meet on Vacation by Emily Henry. I gave that a 4.25 out of 5 stars and this book follows our two main characters slash love interests who have been best friends since college and every year they go on a vacation for a week. Regardless of what's going on in their personal lives they get together and they go on this vacation and a couple of years prior something happened on their vacation things went kind of sideways and they haven't really talked since then. I feel like I guess I own this one so I can actually hold it up. Poppy is very unhappy with where things are at in her life currently and so she is asked by her best friend like when was the last time you were happy and she knows without a doubt that the last time she was happy was the summer she was with Alex and so she like finds a way to weasel her way back into Alex's life and be like let's go on one final vacation and like try to repair our relationship not necessarily in those words but that's kind of what happens and so the book takes place showing us all of these different years of them um being in the past and their vacations their friendship but also present day and I just I really enjoyed it it is like a great romance it is so good it is like perfectly fluffy beach read material which is a pun because her first book was beach read which I also enjoyed um I definitely enjoyed this and I definitely will read more from Emily in the in the future. I then read A Holdout by Jeffrey Kluger which I gave a 3.75 out of 5 stars. I also talk about this in I know I talk about it in the wrap up because I've been filming my wrap up as I go so I talked about it earlier today but anyway um I feel like I might have rated it too highly as I've looked back on how much I thought about the book. So this book takes place both in space and on earth and in space our main character is on a space station and there is an accident and they are all supposed to evacuate there's three crew members on board and they're supposed to evacuate and she chooses to stay behind it's out of like a political move it's kind of like a protest um, for her to stay behind and she gets in trouble with like all of the countries everywhere like everybody's pissed and on earth it's set in the Amazon and the secondary main character there is trying to she does like like what, what what's the word I'm thinking of she's like health aid type stuff um, and they're trying to help these citizens uh, in these different tribal communities where the current leader of the Amazon is like basically uh, fleecing the entire world's governments saying like he's helping all the people and all these fires that are being started are natural when really he's starting all these fires and trying to run people out of their tribal lands in order to um, basically he's doing what white people did when we came to America. I mean if we're being honest that's pretty much what he did. Um, so that happened. And so it takes place like following these two places of things that are happening and um, why why we as people let these things happen. And there were a lot of things that it was just like okay you can tell that this is written by a white dude like okay whatever. But then also there were these moments of seeing what was happening to these people. Um, being burned out of their homes and losing their loved ones and everything they've ever known in their entire lives um everything they've ever had and like the humanity that was written into it was just so well done it's so weird to have like these two per I I honestly considered dnfing this book so many times but I would get to like these nuggets of just this grip with humanity and all of our issues but also the beauty of humanity you know we can be both our own protectors and our own destruction and it it really portrayed that so well 
but then like the uh, rest of it I hated. So like I'm I'm very torn on this book in particular. I, I really struggle with like figuring out if I like this one or not. So and the final arc that we're going to talk about, which originally I wasn't going to talk about in this video, but hey, here we are. So let's talk about it. Um, the Love Hypothesis by Allie Hazelwood. I give this a 5.25 out of 5 stars, which is a perfect rating. I loved this book so dang much. Uh, it was, it was fantastic. It was wonderful. It is following our main character, Olive, who is a, like, she's like a researcher at a college like a grad student. I don't know college terms. I've discussed this when I was discussing the book earlier. I don't know college terms, so whatever. And then she accidentally uh, fake kisses a guy, not knowing who he is, just basically was like, can I kiss you? And he makes like some kind of a non-committal response and she kisses him because she's trying to like fake out her friend and make her friend think that she is happy in a relationship with someone else. So her friend will go get in a relationship with someone else. It's, it's, a, it's a whole ordeal. So it ends up this guy that she kisses is Adam, who is a professor at the college that she goes to, but he's the professor over like a different, like they're not connected it anyway so it's not super creepy he's not super old that's not super creepy like it's totally normal okay like there's no rules or regulations or moral implications about this relationship it's totally fine and the author expressly states like all of those things so I'm here for it in a mutual benefit type situation these two characters start fake dating which I love a fake dating trope and it is so funny because like these things keep happening like all of like the rom-com mayhem is happening and at one point they're like gonna end up at a hotel room together and Olive is like we can't go there's only gonna be one bed and Adam's like no really like this is my like there's gonna be two beds and she's like you don't understand there's only gonna be one bed it was so hilarious I will leave you in suspense to whether or not there was one better too. Just the like the self-awareness of Olive and of the author uh, like falling into these like rom-com tropes was so beautifully done. I absolutely loved it. And there's really this darker side to it too of um, what women in STEM have to deal with. And if you read the author's note, you know that um, Allie has been in STEM and has had to deal with some of the things um, that some of the characters, the female characters in here have dealt with um, and has known people that have dealt with things far worse. And so she was able to put those things into this book and make it seem more like the real uh, type of environment that these women work in. And so I really appreciated that aspect of it. Like while I was having a great time, I was also getting like real world experiences with these women. Um, so I really appreciated that. <sighs> Chapter 16 is fantastic. That's when people get naked. It was a great time. I'm fairly certain that our main character, Olive, is demisexual. It's not expressly stated on page, but it is stated that she um, does not feel sexually attracted to someone unless she is very um, familiar with them and has to have a deep emotional and personal connection with that person in order to be sexually attracted to them. I have never felt so validated in my entire life, especially because I do read adult romances and I do like them, but everything to me, I'm always like, this is so unrealistic because me, I would never act that way because I don't, my brain doesn't function like that. So seeing demisexual representation in an adult romance that is being highly touted and very popular was just fantastic. So love that book. Love that for me. So happy to have read it. Uh, definitely will be buying a copy. Definitely will be rereading again and again and again and again and again. <sighs> so those were the six arcs that I read. If you've read any of these or if you have any comments, questions, or concerns, please hit me up in the comment section down below. That is all I have for today. I post reading, writing, book, and planner related videos a couple of times a week. If you don't want to miss anything I have going in the future, make sure you hit the subscribe button and the notification bell down below. And until then, I will see you guys next time. Bye!